there's been this like social media hashtag trend campaign kind of thing going around called Me Too. And what this is is like all these women are sharing about their experiences with sexual harassment or um, sexual assault, anything that ever happened to them regarding that. I had a friend who I had lunch with last time I was in Virginia and he was asking me because I moved to New York and he's like, oh, I saw that video of, I don't know if you saw this, but the girl who was walking through New York and it was like what it's like to walk through New York as a woman or 10 hours walking through all the boroughs of New York City and all the like street harassment she experienced. And my friend was like, is that real? Like, does that actually happen? And I was like, literally every single day, like it is like an everyday experience. And I think a lot of men are kind of, I don't know, like ignorant to the reality of it. I was talking to my friend also who lives in Midtown and she's like, yeah, people just don't understand. Like a man will never know what it's like to walk down the street as a woman. Cause when you're walking with someone, like guys don't really talk to you because they see you're with a guy. But like when you're by yourself, like only someone in that situation can know what it's actually like. So I don't know. It's just really, I feel like videos like that are so eye opening cause it actually gives people an insight to what it, it is actually like as a woman to simply walk down the street. And people think like, oh, I heard a lot of criticism about it afterwards. Like it was so heavily edited and they just, you know, it's staged, it's fake. And I'm like, everything in that video has happened to me and like everyone that I know pretty much. So it's real. Like that, not only that, but also sexual harassment at jobs and sexual assault, like everything is just much more common than people even realize. I think a lot of men don't even realize what goes on because it's like, I know I don't want to be one of those people who's like, all oh, men are so horrible. And I feel like it comes across that way sometimes, but it's just the culture that we live in. I don't want to blame men for it. I blame the culture that we live in and like what we're taught about each other because we're pretty much taught that we're objects and that we're animals and we should just do whatever we want and act on our impulses and so during the summer I attended a talk I don't know if you guys remember his name is Dr. Edward Sri Sri or Sri I'm not sure how to pronounce his name but he's like an amazing author and speaker and he talked about how the difference between humans and animals and like we're often told or taught to believe that like we're animals and we kind of just have to like act on our impulses and he talked about how we're so much more than that and we have capabilities and you know we're not just like guided by our urges it's like if you see someone on the street if you like have some, you don't have to like do or say something you know you can like keep it to yourself and learn how to control yourself you know like we're humans with we're rational people you know it's such a common thing that people are like oh we're sexual beings we're just sexual people I'm like yeah, we're sexual beings, but we're also logical, we're also spiritual, we're also emotional. Like, there's so much more to a human than people say. They're like, oh yeah, we're just sexual beings. I'm like, yeah, that's a huge part of us, but it's not all of us, and we don't have to just live by that alone, you know? We should be teaching our, like, teaching our men, not only men, but women, like, everyone, more than that. And we, like, we have the capability for more than that. And I think we just sell ourselves short by thinking that we're just animals and like bow down to whatever we have the capability to be trained and oh i have this book men women and the mystery of love this is a book that i bought he actually signed it for me um but yeah so i opened up this page to more than animal instinct and he writes it is important to note that the sexual urge in human persons is not the same as the sexual instinct found in animals Animals act according to their instincts and appetites. Human persons, however, are not enslaved to their passions and desires. With intellect and free will, persons can choose a course of action based on self-reflection, no matter what desires may be stirring within them. For example, a very hungry man may desire to eat a ham sandwich that is offered to him, but he can choose not to follow his desire because he generously wants someone else to have the sandwich or because he has committed to fast on that particular day. A person can rise above appetites for the sake of a higher goal. A dog, however, cannot do that. What happens when you put a steak in front of a normal hungry dog? Is the dog going to take a pass on that steak to let 
the other hungry canines in the neighborhood have a chance to eat it? Will the dog say to himself, I better not eat that, it's a Friday in Lent. Of course not, a hungry dog will devour the piece of meat that sits before him. Similarly, John Paul II exam explains that in animals, the sexual instinct is a reflex mode of action, not dependent on conscious thought. A female cat in heat does not reflect on what is best time, place, or circumstance for her to mate, and she does not ponder which male cat in the neighborhood would make the ideal partner. Cats simply act reflexively according to their instincts. Human persons, however, are not called to live like the animals. They do not have to be enslaved to what is stirring within them in the sexual sphere. In the end, the person is in control of the sexual urge, not the other way around. The person can choose how he or she wants to use it. A man, for example, may experience a sexual attraction to a woman. He may sometimes even experience this attraction as something happening to him something that begins to take place in his sensual or emotional life without any initiative on his part. That attraction, however, can and should be subordinated to his intellect and will. While a person may not always be responsible for what spontaneously happens to him in the arena of sexual attraction, he is responsible for what he decides to do in response to those interior stirrings. So yeah, basically, like, we really can't control who we're attracted to, or like, we see someone on the street, or we see a someone we're attracted to we're not responsible like we can't control those feelings and desires and like things that happen within us but we can control how we act upon those and we should just learn how to like um not learn like we know that we're responsible for our actions and i think one of the biggest problems in today is that people aren't held accountable for their actions especially men and i don't want to put this i don't know i don't want to say like men men and women it's just a society problem i my friend posted a status today and she's like you know this isn't just a men thing it's a it's a society problem it's like we should be raising our sons and daughters to see each other to see the human dignity of the person you know as before we can that's the whole root of the problem it's not just like pointing fingers like oh men it's your problem but yeah once we can do that i think the problem is responsibility like we need to be held responsible for our actions and he writes, he is responsible for what he decides to do in response to those interior stirrings. So yeah, like we are responsible for our actions. You know, we can't control how we feel or what we want to do or what we think about, but we can control how we act upon it. And we should be held responsible for those actions. And the problem today is like not enough people are held responsible for their actions and they just get away with things and things get swept under the rug and all these things happen and we hear every day all these stories and like we experience things and the more i think that these things are brought to light that's why i think the campaign is good in a way to like bring things to light but i'm not seeing enough men talk about it or really know about it or think about it i'm like is this really gonna do anything like all these women sharing the stories and stuff is this really gonna help solve the problem i feel like once everyone understands it and the gravity of it and like going back to the root problem of why we're like this and like the objectification and like the commodification of the human person in our culture which like so many people disagree with me on but that is just life so yeah I just hope that like I don't know I've been doing a lot of like these Catholic readings and going to speaking events over the summer like I've made videos about it and it's just so eye-opening about love and relationships and interactions and the world around us and all the problems in it that I see and experience every single day so yeah he also writes what love is that love is to will the good of another and you know, it's not like a self-seeking thing, which is what we're living in. It's just sad. It's really cold today, so I was happy I can finally wear my onesie, onesie season. And yeah, I didn't really leave the house much today. I just worked, so no exciting vlog. I just thought I would share my thoughts on this Me Too campaign. It's just, I don't know, it's sad. And it's sad to me how it makes guys uncomfortable to talk about. They're like, ugh, like people like aren't talking about it and I think I would like to see more men I've only seen honestly like 
one guy on my timeline post about it and it was really nice and it just made me feel better but all these women are talking about it and like where are the men in this are they like wow this happens or like oh yeah I don't know it's like I just would like to hear more opinions of men and how they're here for us like I just saw one really good post today But that's it, one post, and like the rest of the guys on my time, like timeline aren't talking about it. And then all the women are like, me too, me too, me too. Like all these posts. And it just often seems that women are just alone in this and have their secret silent struggles that sometimes get brought to light and sometimes no one believes them. And yeah, that's just sad. So that's pretty much it for today's vlog.